Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. We've done quite a few videos on gaming phones recently, but the one you guys have asked us the most about is this phone, the Asus ROG Phone 2. This thing is an absolute gaming monster, so let me tell you all about it in our full review. The Asus ROG Phone 2 is made like many smartphones these days. There's a glass back and an aluminum frame. However, it is a bit different from your average flagship. As a gaming phone, the ROG 2 brings a gaming look, though it is more subdued than some competitors. You still get a few aggressive accents, but the colors are tame, and the body is rounded, not angular. This phone is a beast. It's taller, thicker, and heavier than last year's model. You get a larger screen and a huge 6,000 mAh battery, and now the cooling system doesn't protrude as much. Of course, it wouldn't be a true gaming device without colorful RGB LEDs. There are a bunch of options for the patterns and colors, or you can switch it off entirely. The screen is a 6.6 inch AMOLED with a 1080p resolution and a tall aspect ratio. The selfie cam sits within the thick top bezel, and the bottom one is large as well. Asus says this gives you space to rest your thumbs while gaming. This screen has a refresh rate of 120Hz, twice that of a typical smartphone panel. When you're scrolling or playing high frame rate content, moving images look more crisp without blurring or smearing at the edges. Higher frame rates for gaming are the real deal, and although many games don't support anything higher than 60 FPS, there's a growing number that do. We'll leave a link to an extensive list in the description below. Anyway, back to the display. It really looks great. The high refresh rate doesn't compromise the black levels, and you also get punchy colors. You can still opt for more accurate colors and settings. And there's HDR support too, if you want to watch HDR content on your phone. Maximum brightness is impressive for a high refresh rate panel, blowing competitors like the Red Magic 3 out of the water. We got 480 nits maximum with a manual slider, and a boost up to 620 nits in auto mode and bright conditions. The panel is also quite responsive. Asus says that it's industry leading, thanks to 240Hz input polling and optimized software. This low touch latency could give you that extra edge in your games. As an AMOLED screen, there isn't always on display so you can check your phone at a glance. But in case you need it, Asus has also included a notification LED up at the top to catch your attention. Along with good visuals, you need good audio. And the ROG Phone 2 has one of the best smartphone speakers we've ever tested. It's a stereo speaker setup with a 5 magnet design, and each speaker has its own amplifier. Loudness is really impressive, and you get great depth and clarity. There is a 3.5mm jack for headphones, a 24-bit DAC for high-res audio, and FM radio support. One thing to keep in mind is that on this phone, storage isn't expandable through microSD. But you do get a ton of storage on board, with the larger option reaching 1TB. Under the display sits an optical fingerprint reader for you to wake up and unlock the phone. It works pretty well. Not the fastest around, though. Face unlock is an option too, but a less secure one. One unique aspect of the ROG Phone 2 is that it has two USB-C ports, one at the bottom and one on the side. The side one offers a more advanced USB 3.1 connection, and you can use it to charge or to connect to accessories like the AeroActive cooling fan. The fan does come in the retail box, and it even works with the included Aero case. It does a great job at keeping the phone in your hands nice and cool, and it's more quiet than last year's fan. The Kunai gamepad is an important accessory, but sadly you'll have to buy it separately. It's surely worth the money though. Depending on the game, it can make the whole experience much more comfortable. The controller was developed by ASUS, and there's a left and a right side. These pieces can slide into a special holder to form a wireless console controller. Another option is to attach the pieces to the shell case, which converts your phone into something resembling a Nintendo Switch. You'll have to link the buttons to the screen controls of your games, but the process is pretty straightforward. And Asus says that soon this won't even be necessary. Players will be able to share their key maps for you to download. Another accessory that can work together with the controller is the TwinView Dock 2. It attaches to the phone and gives it a second screen, identical to the first one. The twin view can be combined with the controller, and the second screen is useful for multitasking or having videos or music in the background. The setup looks similar to a Nintendo DS, but sadly very few if any games support two screens for now. You also have options to buy other docks. The mobile desktop dock connects the phone to a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, 
and Android gaming with them actually works great. You also get a bunch of different ports for connectivity. Another dock we checked out was the Ygig Display Dock, which uses 60GHz Wi-Fi to connect the phone wirelessly to a TV or monitor, with low latency. When it works, it works great, but the range is quite limited if you want the best results. Okay, okay, enough about the accessories. Let's move on to the ROG 2's performance and how it actually holds up during some heavy gaming. It has the top chipset currently available, the Snapdragon 855 Plus. Basically an overclocked version of the Snapdragon 855 with a boosted Adreno 640 GPU. Along with that, you also get 12 gigs of RAM. In CPU benchmarks, the ROG Phone 2 has scores similar to other top flagships. It does score much better with on-screen rendering tests because with its high refresh rate screen, its frame rate isn't limited to 60 FPS. In GPU tests, the ROG 2 scores significantly better than phones with the regular Adreno 640. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. When we ran our thermal throttling test, the results were quite good. After 25 minutes of heavy use with performance mode on, the ROG 2 throttled down to 85% of max CPU performance, but was able to maintain that for the rest of the hour-long session. When we attached and used the included fan, things got a lot more comfortable and thermal throttling disappeared. While peak performance didn't change, the phone was able to maintain close to 100% sustained CPU performance for the whole hour. Overall, the gaming experience is excellent here. I haven't run into any hiccups yet, and supported games look quite smooth at a higher frame rate. And of course, with the controller, it feels like a legit console setup. But even without the controller, it's still really enjoyable. The ultrasonic air triggers on the corners of the phone are quite handy, especially for shooter games. They recognize taps and swipes and give haptic feedback. It's all customizable too. To be an effective mobile console, you need to have good battery life, and Asus has you covered here. With this hefty 6,000 mAh battery, the ROG Phone 2 scored an excellent endurance rating of 114 hours in our proprietary tasks, while its screen was set at 120Hz. When we switched to the less demanding 60Hz mode, the rating was a whopping 132 hours. Unlike most flagships these days, the ROG 2 doesn't have super fast charging. Asus says that it wants to preserve the lifetime of the battery. Its 30 watt charger with hypercharge technology got the battery from 0 up to 66% in just under an hour. The ROG Phone 2's UI sits on top of Zen UI 6, based on Android 9 Pie. If you switch on the performance mode, the wallpaper will start glowing, as if the whole phone is going into overdrive. You do have the option to switch to the more traditional Zen Phone home screen if you want to. There are extensive power and battery saving options as well as a system-wide audio equalizer called the Audio Wizard. One handy menu available in-game is the Game Genie. It slides out from the left side of the display and gives you a host of gaming options. If you want, you can enable a floating toolbar. It gives you real-time info on your CPU, GPU, temperature, battery level, and FPS. You can map your air triggers from here, and impressively record macros as well to map complex touchscreen info. There's also an onboard screen recorder to capture your gaming feats, and is customizable as well. Going even beyond these options, you have an entire gaming portal called the Armory Crate, a dedicated hub for all of your games and customization options. I like the design, but I wish you could customize the look of games on the carousel. Seems to be assigned randomly. Each game has its own individual profile, where you can tweak extensive options. Performance, graphics, and temperature controls are all here, among many others. Finally, let's move on to the cameras, which are by no means the focus of this type of phone. They're still nice, actually the same setup as the Asus Zenfone 6. You get a 48 megapixel main cam with a quad bayer filter, which doesn't have OIS, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide cam. In good light, 12 megapixel photos from the main cam look very nice. Auto HDR is on by default, and these images have a lot of detail and almost no noise. Color reproduction is nice, and dynamic range is quite wide. The ultra wide cam has fixed focus and takes all right shots. They're not comparable quality wise to the main camera, but they're still decent. And the distortion correction does a good job. In portrait mode, the results are okay too. The edge detection is sometimes off, but with some patience, you can get a decent bokeh shot. In low light, quality from the main camera isn't great. There is good detail, but images are overall soft, and there's a fair amount of noise. Turning on the dedicated night mode does improve things by evening out the exposure, saving some blown highlights, and reducing the noise. Ultra-wide shots at night are generally not very good, 
though you do get some improvement when night mode is switched on. In daylight, selfies from the 24 megapixel front facing cam are actually pretty solid. Detail is good, as well as the colors and sharpness. Videos can be taken from the main cam at up to 4K at 60fps, with EIS in all modes. Video quality is excellent across the board. There's a lot of detail, and the laid back processing means that colors look natural, and you don't have aggressive sharpening. The ultra wide cam can shoot in up to 4K at 30fps. Colors are punchier, but the videos have slightly more noise than the main cam. But regardless, they look solid. So there you have it guys, the ASUS ROG Phone 2. This brings pretty much all the features you'd be looking for in a gaming phone. There's a solid build with LEDs, an all-star AMOLED screen that brings a high refresh rate and high brightness, awesome stereo speakers, excellent performance, tons of battery life, and a score of cool and useful accessories available to flesh out your gaming experience. But is it perfect? No. Though the screen is amazing, it's still only 1080p. I guess a higher resolution is something to look forward to in the future. And there is no IP rating here against water and dust, so you should be extra careful with the phone. But honestly, these are just nitpicks. If you're looking for a gaming phone and you want the best of the best, here it is. The new king in town. It's not cheap, and most people wouldn't dream of buying this phone. But for that dedicated group of hardcore mobile gamers, the RLG Phone 2 definitely deserves our recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.